This is African American History is American History. As a pathologist, Solomon Carter Fuller performed numerous autopsies, which enabled him to make observations, none of them more pivotal than the neurofibrillary tangles and the miliary plaques he encountered while examining the brain tissue of deceased people who had dementia. Fuller reported on the significance of neurofibrillary tangles five months before Alois Alzheimer's did. And his discovery identified a physically observable basis for this affliction, which so decimated the memories of its victims. Ultimately, the results of Fuller's research helped to confirm that the condition now known as Alzheimer's was not the result of insanity, but rather a physical disease of the brain. He also went on to publish the first comprehensive review of this disease. As a leading Alzheimer's expert, Fuller was invited to speak at the historic 1909 Clark University Conference in Worcester, Massachusetts, which drew such guests as nuclear physicist Ernest Rutherford and psychoanalytical gurus Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud on his only visit to America. Fuller sought to mitigate racial disparities in mental health care by training young black psychiatrists to treat black veterans of World War I, yet he couldn't overcome the medical profession's racial inequities in his own life. As a professor at Boston University, he was paid less than his white colleagues. And despite carrying out the duties of the head of the neurology department, he never received the title of chair or even a full professorship. He once remarked, With the sort of work that I have done, I might have gone farther and reached a higher plane had it not been for the color of my skin. In 1933, Fuller retired from Boston University after a white junior colleague was promoted over him to become the official head of the neurology department. He continued to practice neurology and psychiatry until diabetes robbed him of his eyesight. Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller died on January 16th 1953, at the age of 80, he died of complications related to diabetes and gastrointestinal cancer. His wife, Mita Vall Warwick Fuller, died on March 18, 1968, at Cardinal Cushing Hospital in Framingham, Massachusetts. Now, to say that Dr. Fuller was not treated well by the medical profession would be an understatement. He received lesser titles and lower salaries than white medical professors with far less experience. Sadly, Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller's contributions to medical science were largely neglected by academia, simply because of the color of his skin. It wouldn't be until 1974 that he finally received posthumous recognition. That year, the Black Psychiatrists of America established the Solomon Carter Fuller Program for Aspiring Black Psychiatrists. Also in 1974, the Solomon Carter Fuller Mental Health Center in Boston was established. The American Psychiatric Association presents its annual Solomon Carter Fuller Award to an individual who has done pioneering work to improve the lives of black people. When you know that you don't know, you've got to read. This has been African American History is American History. I'm Harlan Kearsley, and on behalf of everyone involved with African American History is American History, thank you for listening. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe.
Once you do, you'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. Thanks again, and please stay safe. African American History is American History. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2025.